on August 31st, 2022, this revenue calculator that Amazon has provided us for years is finally going away. So Amazon is introducing a new revenue calculator that should be more streamlined and easier to use in which I'm gonna be covering today so you know exactly how to use it properly. That way you can understand your profit margins and your fees a whole lot better. So let's go on to it today. If you're familiar with how to get to this fulfillment by Amazon revenue calculator, which is the old one, that is being retired, you can actually access the new one by selecting go to new version. Um, after August 31st, 2022, this calculator will be replaced by the new one and that link that you previously used will be replaced again by the new one. So go ahead and click go to new version. I'll also put a link directly to this in the description. Now, in order to actually access this calculator, you need an Amazon Seller Central account. It can be the individual or the professional plan, that does not matter, but you do need an Amazon Seller Central account. So when you, you first open this revenue calculator, you're greeted with this uh, input right here where it says find existing product or enter product information. So there's two different ways we can go about finding you know, our product dimensions, a, a similar product that we might be selling. Uh, the first is to actually search the Amazon catalog. So if you have your product already listed, you could search for that product using this um, search bar right here. Or if you're reselling a product, you can look up that product. Uh, so what it will do is we'll plan to sell these pencil cases, which I found on Alibaba. So it's just a very simple rectangular pencil case and we'll plan to sell that. So let's just type in pencil case. And as soon as I click search, it'll immediately look at my products that I have on my test account here and it's saying that I do not currently have a product that matches this search term. And that's because I have not listed this product. This is just a test. As you can see down here, there are over 14,000 pages that I can take a look at for this search term. Now you can find one that looks very similar to the one that you'll be selling to get some similar dimensions. Or if you actually have the ASIN, you can copy that ASIN, put it in the search menu and search for that specific ASIN. And then Amazon's gonna immediately pull up all of the package dimensions, the unit weight, and really everything about that existing product and put it out for you down below here. Now, before we get into this, um, I do want to go over the defined product because more than likely, this is what you'll be using if you're a private label seller on Amazon. Now, there are a couple things that we need to input here. First is the Amazon store. Select Amazon US if you're in the US or whatever marketplace you're selling in. The unit of measurement will either be in inches or centimeters, depending on what your supplier is providing you. Now, a quick and easy way to find this information is go to the Alibaba listing page for your product or to ask your supplier directly. Um, but if you scroll down here, typically in the overview and quick details section, you'll be able to find the product dimensions. Now, this is not the product dimensions. This is the package dimensions. This is what a single unit of your product or the bundle of products um, is gonna be actually packaged into and shipped to the customer. This is how it's gonna be stored. So if we jump back here and we go down to the section where it says packaging and delivery, you'll usually find the single package size which is slightly larger than what the product dimension is here. And I bet they're gonna be using a, um, a poly bag or a plastic bag to package these. So we have 21 by 12 by one centimeter. So if we go back here, we can actually change the unit of measurement, then type in 21 by 12 by one. It doesn't matter which order, this could be 12 by 21 by one. Um, Amazon's just using this to calculate the footprint, not necessarily the width, the height, and the length separately. Next, you'll go to your unit weight. This is sometimes listed in here um, in the overview tab or in the package and delivery. Uh, fortunately, we have 0 0.045 kilograms. So what you can do is you can copy that and you can actually convert that from kilograms to pounds. After doing that conversion, I figured out this is about 0.1 or a tenth of a pound uh, once you've converted that. Next, we'll move on to the bottom row here. And the first one we have to answer is what is the product category? This is the Amazon category that you'll list your product under. If you're unsure, just find a similar product on Amazon and see what category that's listed under. That's typically the best. So this will be listed under office products if you just type in O, it should find it. There it is, office products. And then our item price. This is your sales price on Amazon. This is not how much you're gonna buy it for. This is not your unit cost. This is how much you're selling it for. For us, it will be $9.99. And then shipping charge. You do not have to input anything here if you're using Amazon FBA, but if you're an FBM or fulfillment by merchant seller, this is how much um, you're gonna charge the customer for shipping. 
So we'll just put zero in here. And then once that refreshes, you're gonna see three different menu items down here. The first should be your Amazon fulfillment. This is if you're using the FBA fulfillment method. The second is your fulfillment if you're doing FBM or fulfillment by merchant. And then the third one here is, um, it allows you to select a different one. So if you wanted to also look at another Amazon FBA scenario where maybe you know we were doing a $12.99 sales price, you could go ahead and do that separately from this one here. Since this tutorial is only for Amazon FBA, just to make it simple, we'll uh, end up just looking at the Amazon FBA results here. So we'll look at the middle one here so it's easier for you to see, and I'll exit out of these, not to confuse anybody. Next, Amazon takes all of your information for your package dimensions and the unit weight and calculates your referral fee, which is known as your Amazon fees here. This is typically 15 to 20% of your sales price. The second one is fulfillment cost. This is how much it costs to actually fulfill each order as a customer uh, places one. So this is 307. This number will always be smaller the smaller that your package is and the lighter that it is. Depends on the product size tier, which I'll also provide a, um, a link in the description to show you how much those product size tiers are and how Amazon comes up with this number. But this is what you're gonna be paying for each sale. The third one here is your storage cost. Um, this follows the same logic. The smaller the product and the less that it weighs, the less that your storage cost will be. This is usually only a, a cent or two for a small item uh, per month. Moving down, we have an input here for the time that we'll be storing our products. If you're in Q1 to Q3 or January to September, uh, you're gonna be paying less in overall storage fees than um, opposed to October to December or Q4 of every year. When you store products between October and December, your average price will go up nearly 2.7 times in comparison to the uh, other months of the year. This is just because of the holiday season coming up and Amazon can and will do this. Um, since it's more costly for them to store products. So as you can see here, it nearly doubles um, by a factor of 2.7 times um, if you go ahead and store it in Q4. For us, current month is June, so we'll uh, go ahead and select this one. And then next is gonna ask you uh, average inventory units stored. How many units are you gonna actually store at Amazon, um, their, their fulfillment centers? For us, let's just say that we're gonna order 200 units and we're gonna send all 200 units to Amazon. So we wanna make sure that's accurate there. Next, you should go ahead and estimate your monthly units sold. If you're unsure of what this number is, um, you can use Jungle Scout or even Jungle Scout's free uh, monthly sales estimator for a competitor that has probably less than 15 reviews to give you a, a solid idea of what you can expect. Now for a product like this, with uh, minimal ad advertising, I'd say we probably sell 25 units a month. So now Amazon's gonna take that information and then estimate the total storage cost per unit sold. Um, time does play a factor into that. All right, so right now, if you jump ahead and you look down the bottom, you're like, wow, I have a 50%, nearly a 50% profit margin. This is gonna be a great product. Well, we're missing one big piece of the pie, and that is our COGS, or our cost of goods sold. It's essentially, how much does it cost you to purchase that raw product from your supplier and get it over to Amazon uh, to their final fulfillment center location? Now, the easiest way, is to look at your quote here. So for 200 pieces of this pencil box, it's gonna cost me $247. So if we take 247 and we divide that by 200 units, we are looking at $1.24 rounding up uh, cost per unit. So that includes shipping, make sure you include shipping into that. So we'll go ahead and put $1.24 since that's, that's what it's cost us to actually get that product from um, our supplier's location the whole way to Amazon. And lastly, for the miscellaneous costs, are there any other costs that could be attributed to this single order? Um, you may want to add your Amazon professional membership, which is almost $40 a month. Now keep in mind that this whole calculation is for one single unit. So when you're estimating uh, your membership cost, make sure you divide it by the total number of units. In other words, let's take the total membership cost for the professional plan and divide that by 200 units. So basically 20 cents a unit is what we're estimating that uh, per month. So you can add that in there if you want. I typically leave it out, especially if you're selling more than one product, it's hard to say how much a single unit of one product um, it's gonna cost you for that membership plan. Something to keep in mind though. Lastly, and the fun part, let's look at the bottom here, which is our final calculations. Amazon is gonna tell you how much is your cost per unit, which includes your cost of goods sold, 
they're gonna tell you how much you're gonna profit per unit. So right now we're looking at $3.67 in profit for each sale that we make. Now, if we know that in one month's time, we're gonna sell on average 25 units, we'd only make about $91 in actual profit, which would provide us roughly a 37% profit margin. Now, if you, you can play around with this, you can add all 200 units. With this total order, you know, you'd make around $734 which is very good for just reselling you know, some pencil cases. All right, I hope that gives you a better idea of how to use the Amazon FBA revenue calculator. The Amazon FBM calculator is very similar, except you're adding some of your own costs for storage and fulfillment. And then the FBA small and light calculator on the right here, it's essentially the same thing. It's just another program that Amazon provides you to get reduced uh, fulfillment costs if you meet their criteria for a small product.